What's going on OPB? It's Mitch here from the OmniBuddy channel to do an overview with you today from, well, this one of this publisher's first omnibuses that they've ever done. We are looking at Image Comics Rat Queens. All right, so this book I have been waiting for since forever. I have been hearing nothing but good things about it. There have been uh, tons of trade paperbacks and other editions that have come out, but I have been patiently, well, impatiently, patiently waiting for Image to finally collect the entire thing in one book. I didn't think they'd actually do one book. I thought it would be like two oversized hardcovers or something like that, kind of typical image. But here we are, they have done an actual omnibus from Image Comics. Absolutely incredible. Uh, and I finally got to read this fantasy book. Super cool. Let's find out why. All right, so here is the Rat Queen's Omnibus. This comes to us from Image Comics. Here's the shot of the spine. It is a flat spine for those of you who care. Um, and here is a nice shot of the back. This does real retail for $125 USD. And I believe the print run was 5,000 if I remember correctly. So not a huge massive print run and image uh, it's kind of a uh, up in the air toss up if they are actually going to reprint a hardcover omnibus. We'll pop off this. I did get a damaged copy from OPB knowingly, not that they sent it to me. I bought a new one and then they sent me one. Uh, so I know mine's damaged, uh, but you got this nice little uh, band of uh, some of the main characters on the, f on the front of the hardcovers here. Really nice bind. Um, really good quality. I know I did a little bit of a stretch and then I took some photos and then I read it and you get a really nice eye hole, no loose uh, page signatures. These are the signatures as you can see when they're all connected, where they all connect in the little groupings, that's a signature. Uh, yeah, but really good quality bind overall, uh, holds up nicely. So uh, you got some really nice end paper here. I always appreciate when you get uh, character art on the end sheet, on the end papers. And it actually continues from here, continues on over here with some of the main characters. Pretty cool. I've never actually seen them do that where it kind of continues off of the page from one to the next. So really cool, uh, really fun. So uh, this comes to us from Curtis J. Weeb and Ryan uh, Ferrier, illustrated by Rock Upchurch and a whole host of others, uh, Tamara, Bon, Bonavillain and uh, Marco Lesco on colors, lettering by uh, Brisson and uh, Frerer. Again, sorry if I'm screwing up names because I always do that. But yeah, so a ton of people on this. You got a ton of uh, stories in here, over a thousand pages um, of, uh, yeah, basically a thousand pages of story. And then you got a fair amount of extras in here. So uh, really cool. You start off right right off the bat with Meet the Queens, the Rat Queens. You got Betty, you've got Dee, Hannah, and Violet, and you do meet some other uh, Rat Queens along the way, but these are kind of the main four, the main staple. I mean, honestly, a couple more get added pretty quickly, and you are with them most of the time. Pretty great. Um, I really had a ton of fun in this story. So if you are into D&D or fantasy books and that kind of stuff, uh, you should really love this, especially if you're into comics and D&D. Uh, that's Dungeons and Dragons, if you don't know. Uh, if you don't know that, uh, but... Uh, if you are really into those types of things and you don't take it too seriously, like I, I have a couple campaigns on D&D &D that I play with some friends and we have fun. We do, you know, stick to the rules and all that kind of stuff. But we also have a lot of laughs, a lot of joking, a lot of like, could we do this, you know, and push really pushing it with our uh, dungeon master and trying to really push, um, push it and have some fun and laughs and be a little crazy along the way. If you are like that, 
this book is for you. It's definitely all about the Rat Queens, all about some really powerful, strong female leads. Um, so if you're not into that, well, this probably isn't the book for you. Uh, and also, if you're not into uh, bad language, drug use, uh, if you are sensitive to nudity and sex, and especially gore, this book is not for you. It is definitely NSFW, not safe for work. I will try my hardest to not uh, show anything too crazy in here, but I really loved the art throughout this whole book. It's pretty dang consistent, and uh, the characterizations are really consistent. They don't go changing too much. There's a lot of story arc in this book, and you are hit right off the bat with some uh, dark bad guys and... Uh, craziness is happening and obviously a lot of gore that is happening. Um, I'm not going to go too much into all the stories because uh, like a D&D campaign, there is a ton of story, a ton of arc, characterizations, character development that just weaves in and out of this thousand page behemoth of a story. And you know what? Uh, I'll say first off that the first 50%, so the first half of this book, uh, was absolutely phenomenal. Loved every page. Super cool. I'll just flip through it while I talk. Uh, maybe I should be a little careful as I'm flipping through here because I don't want to have to take time to blur stuff all the time. But uh, the first half of this book, really cool. Uh, there is... Uh, they go questing, they're trying to make money, so it's very, uh, very traditional uh, D&D, going on adventures, getting side quests, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but these ladies uh, love their sex, drugs, and rock and roll type situations. They love their men, they love their women, and uh, they definitely do all that in this book. So um, maybe a little bit too much, in my opinion, to the detriment of this Uh and it does get a little bit to the point of maybe occasionally here and there being a little bit uh, over the top with it and a little bit like, okay, we get it, we get it, we get it. Um, and you're kind of beaten over the head with it. But overall, ton of fun and doesn't really, really take it over the top very often. Uh, yeah, so very fun. You know, they're all sharing a house and questing and uh, going out and partying when they finally make some money after successfully questing and then obviously blowing it all nearly right away. Um, okay, we'll skip that page. There we go. And pretty quickly throughout this, uh, you start getting deeper into the how they react and how they uh, work together and all that stuff, super fun. And then you are uh, hit with a couple new characters throughout the way, very cool. But what happens is uh, one of the Rat Queens has a past, obviously, and she starts, you know, because of her past and because of her uh, characterization and who she is, does get herself into a bit of trouble along the way. And basically, rat queens stick together. There are dragons. Super fun. And you know what? Whoop, whoop. We'll keep uh, keep going out there. There we go. Woo. Uh, anyways, uh, super fun story. And the first half base of the Omni basically uh, does that, you know, warms you up to the characters, warms you up to the story and who they, they are, and then really sets you off onto the main quest and uh, basically what happens in the first one is one of them you know is dealing with her evil self and uh, dealing with who she is and her past a couple of them have that issue uh, religion comes into play and you know drug use and their pasts and um, you know poor choices they've made in the past really come into play um, but what really does is this whole first half of this book follows that major sequence with one of the rat queens uh, dealing with that and the fallout from that. Now, the second half of the book uh, was, in my opinion, good, but not... Uh, 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 it gets a little... Uh, it's a little dicey there. Um, does get a little... Um, 
it has a little bit of a lull. After the first half happens, there's probably, I'd say, the, um, the 50 to 75%. So the, uh, you know, you hit the first half of the book and then the next quarter of the book. So the three quarters of the book right there. Um, so I guess by page, it's almost a thousand pages. So kind of the 500 to 750 page area in there is a little bit of a lull. And I'll say that um, when they do start jumping around, it does get sort of disorientating. Um, you don't really know what's going on and you kind of got to pick up the pieces along the way, which is a little frustrating. Sometimes you're like, man, I was following this really cool story. And then all of a sudden it jumps to this really strange thing. And that is definitely what happens after the first half of the book. It makes this big jump and it's pretty jarring. Um, and you're expecting, you're like, okay, what's the fallout? Well, you are dealing with the fallout, but how it happens is a little bit jarring in uh, what I expected. Uh, so I guess going into it, knowing that a very unexpected uh, jump and kind of solution and uh, well, the rest last half of the book is dealing with uh, the fallout of that choice and the solution in how they went about uh, solving the problem of the first major arc of this. So then the second half, uh, really um, the first half of the second half, so that 50 to 75 percent is kind of setting it up. And then I will say that, you know what, the last quarter of this book the you know seventy five to one hundred percent of this book you know maybe maybe page seven fifty to a thousand whatever you want to say the last quarter of this book really kicked it back up a notch and it is so cool how they actually go about solving some stuff and dealing with some issues and you know it does not a couple time jumps and a couple interesting things along the way um, where it's really fun to see and. Uh, yeah, so they, it kind of does a really far time jump into the future with a lot of the characters, and they are older, and they are dealing with uh, where they left off as adventurers and where they left off as friends, uh, frenemies, enemies, all of that stuff along the way. Um, really, really great way of ending it. I really enjoyed how that all happened. And there really wasn't, at least in my mind, I didn't catch uh much uh story left left uh kind of untold like they all the all the there were no like loose ends or anything like that so i had a ton of fun because it wasn't just you know like oh they told the main story but they left all these threads untied they definitely tied up most if not all of the loose ends so i i really enjoyed it um so yeah we have 1110 uh yeah, so they do some fun things at the end, some really funny like volleyball type scenes, you know, very, <laughs> very like interesting stuff. So they do some fun uh, one-off stories at the end that don't really add much, but they're just kind of a fun telling of some of the characters and things like that. And uh, yeah, so, you know, mage sitting, girls night out, you know, it's they do bedtime stories really funny stuff, really interesting stuff, the absent king. So they kind of just play around at the end for, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe, I don't know, 100 page, maybe like 50 pages or something like that, 40 pages. But then you have a ton of great stuff at the end. You have a ton, all the cover artists here and just, I mean, you can see this. I mean, it's nearly 100 pages of cover art in here really interesting good cover art and then let's get through all this cover art here let's see uh, 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 come on yeah so then you have some of the sketchbook material here with all the different artists and who they uh what kind of what page numbers they were working in and all that and then yeah so you have your initial con concepts to final uh Final pieces and costume palettes, character studies, some cover, uh, sketch cover art right here to uh, kind of lay it out. You have layouts for paneling and all that. Really cool stuff. I love seeing pencils. Uh, that's one of my favorite parts, actually. Like, I love ink, I love color, and all of that, but seeing the penciling 
that's where, that's my jam. I love seeing the pencil art, so that's super cool. And I love seeing these uh, major layouts like this where you can kind of go through and see kind of the overall high level walkthrough of an issue. Super cool, yeah. So this is the thumbnails for issue 13 in here. Really cool stuff. You got a ton of different sketchbooks for a ton of different artists. Love it. Uh, and you know, there's a ton of artists in here, but you know what? Uh, except for the stuff at the very end, those like last 20, 40, whatever pages where they kind of play around and do these weird offshoot fun stories. Uh, the art is really pretty consistent. Um, it does change here and there, but it's not like ultra jarring or anything like that. It does change up a little bit, but overall like, okay, it got a little bit thicker on the lines and a little bit darker, or it got a little bit more toony and cartoony or something like that. Uh, the palettes got a little different or something, but it's not very jarring along the way. Um, and then you got all these covers here for a huge portion of them, which is super fun. And then we are back to it, to the end sheets and paper. And there we go. There it is. A little overview of a big image book, Rat Queens. All right, so that was a quick overview of the Rat Queens omnibus. Uh, like I said, I mean, the art is super good. The story's super cool. There was kind of that middle part of the story that was a bit of a lull. And there were a couple points in the story that, you know, it kind of jumped around a little bit and kind of, it was, it was a little bit jarring because it was sort of out of nowhere. And then you kind of had to uh, kind of reacclimate yourself to what was going on, especially with the time jumps and the like universe type jumps. But man, if you love d d or like some deep fantasy fiction, this, especially combined with like crazy comedy and not taking itself too seriously, this book is absolutely for you. Uh, like I said, the story does pay off in the end. It was really great. The first, I think, probably half of the book was excellent. And then it kind of had this, uh, maybe the third uh, quarter of it, you know, the 75% the at that kind of marker in there somewhere uh, was a little bit of a kind of uh, like everything kind of settled, dust settled. You knew something was going to happen and then boom, it hits again and it definitely pays off. So I kind of had to push through, but man, I read this book and maybe over the course of a week and I took a pause here and there to read a couple other short books too. So it didn't actually take me super long. Actually, I think it was like two weeks, but I read a few books in there too and you know, kids sick, wife's traveling, I'm busy with work. And so definitely pushed through and it was really good. I got to say the binding on this book was very impressive for one of the thicker uh, books I've seen come out of Image. They definitely hit it out of the park with binding and doing some really great paper quality. Absolutely loved it. Uh, I picked up a damaged copy because I'm cheap and I don't care too much about that. Uh, but you can definitely grab some pristine copies over at Organic Price Books. You can use code OMNIBUDDY for two bucks off every order. If you're ordering four or more books, you can use OMNIBUDDY Ship It Together for 5% off your entire order. Uh, but you can use tons of other creator codes out there. Support all those channels. Support my channel if you feel like it. But definitely go out there. Pick up this book if you are into some fun, uh, interesting, doesn't take itself too seriously fantasy books out there. So definitely super cool. Uh, again, not safe for work, uh, definitely not safe for the kiddos. Uh, so if you're uh, sensitive to a ton of gore or uh, nudity or sex or drug use, uh, definitely a lot of that in here. Um, so, you know, take it, take it or leave it. Uh, but that's it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell for notification, do all those things. But the most important thing you can do is comment. Let me know in the comments what your favorite fantasy book is when it comes to graphic novels. All right, that's it. Take care. Stay cool.